Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the semi-finals of FIDE Chess Olympia 2020 played online and uh, I would like to show you the game, uh, one of the games uh, played during the match between India and Poland. Uh, first, I would like to show you the situation after the round one. So here we go. On the first board, of course, Jan Krzysztof Duda and Vichy Anand, leaders of both of representations and Duda actually won against Anand. And on the second board, Radosław Wojtaszek, who is the second of Vichy Anand. So I believe he knows, you know, all the opening preparations uh, better than Anand himself. Uh, however, in this game, he played against Vidit Gujarati and he also won. And then we had the two women boards where Hampi Konero drew against Monika Sochka and Harika Dronavali against Karina Szczepkowska Horowska. Uh, and then in the juniors uh, boards we had the Nihal Sarin who won against Igor Janik and Alicja Śliwicka won against Divya Deshmuk. So first round went to Poland. So Vichy Anand lost, Vidit Gujarati also lost and the women who were favorites, Harika Dronavali and Hampi Konero just drew. So it's not so easy for the second round. Uh, Team India needs to change something in their gameplay if they want to advance actually, you know, to the grand final. Um, so I would like to show you the game from the round two on the first board where Jan Krzysztof Duda gonna play as white and his opponent, of course, Vichy Anand gonna play as black. Uh, Vichy lost in the, in the first game, so definitely he wants to win in the second one. Uh, however, Jan Krzysztof Duda plays a really great tournament. I think I think he had um, 10 out of 11 points or 11 out of 12. So really great tournament so far. So without further ado, let's see what happened uh, on the board of these giants. Duda opens with d4, we have knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3 and bishop b4. So Nimzo Indian defends on the board, we have e3, um, the main line uh, we have castle, bishop d3 and now d5, knight f3. Uh, and here c5 would be the main line but Vichy prefers first take on c4. So we have d takes on c4, bishop takes on c4 and only now c5. Uh, and here Duda asks the bishop, okay, what are you gonna do? a3 and the bishop um, doesn't have much choice so bishop takes on c3 uh, b takes on c3 and now queen c7 first threat on the board here uh, of course c takes on d4 and the queen can attack um, the bishop and also the pawn behind so uh, bishop has to go somewhere the main move here is bishop a2 still keeping the bishop on this beautiful diagonal however Jan Krzysztof Duda prefers to move the bishop to e2 uh, we have b C6 by Vichy Anand and now castle by Duda. Bishop b7 and now knight e5. And this position was reached a couple of times on the top level. The main moves are rook on d8, preparing the, the knight on, on d7 or knight d7, knight b to d7 also can be played. However, Vichy Anand went for knight c6. So it's kind of novelty, at least on the top level. We have queen c6, the battery pointing on g2. So there is the checkmate threat. And of course, bishop f3 could be played, but white would like to avoid actually uh, exchanging the light square bishops as white still has um, the pair of bishops. So that's the, you know, one of the good assets. This is why we have f3 also preparing e4 in the future. And now rook f to d8. Uh, the point is that uh, white probably would like to exchange these pawns and then bring the bishop to b2 and this bishop can be quite powerful um, on this diagonal. However, with the rook on d8, it's not even possible at this moment because uh, queen is actually x-rayed through the pawn. We have bishop b2 um, developing the, the bishop, not the best bishop so far. Uh, and now knight d5 threatening very nice fork. So uh, white has to do something about that. We have queen d2 and now b5 advancing on the queen side uh, and now e4 kicking the knight knight b6 we have rook f to d1 so fighting uh, for the d file as probably d file gonna be the open file and Vichy concentrate on the queen side so knight a4 threatening to take the bishop and Duda said okay you can go for the bishop rook a to b1 uh, and now, do you want to take that bishop? If Vichy actually takes that, then we could have queen b2 and there is a lot of pressure um, on the b5 pawn. So a6 would have to be played, but then a4. 
And now how to continue? B4, uh, it's possible, but it's very, very complicated and slightly better for white. Uh, actually, this battery is very strong, so black doesn't really have a lot of options, but the game definitely is very complicated here. Uh, so Vichy instead played A6, very calm move, supporting the pawn on B5 first. Uh, and Duda said, okay, you didn't take my bishop, so you're not gonna take it anymore. Bishop A1, I'm gonna stay with the bishop on this diagonal and in the right moment I'm just gonna open this diagonal and Vichy said not you not gonna open that c4 so for now c3 pawn is locked over there and it's very difficult to imagine how this bishop gonna you know enter the game that's gonna be a lot of moves a lot of maneuvers and in this position, both players have actually seven minutes on the clock. And just a reminder, this is rapid time control game. So 15 minutes for each player. So both players already uh, spent half of the time and also there is the five seconds incrementation uh, per move we have queen f4 so young krzysztof duda start to improve the position of his pieces he doesn't have much space he controls the center however he has to definitely remaneuver the pieces maybe the bishop maybe this way on this diagonal another bishop maybe on this diagonal as it's difficult to to imagine that you know anything gonna happen with these two pawns they they are completely locking the position and also um, the rooks should be brought also to the uh, to the open file um, and here we have f5 by Vichy Anand a very interesting move weakening the position of the king uh, a bit but this is also beginning of the of the attack so we have e takes on f5 and now rook f8 and if white would like to you know save the pawn that's not really you know greatest idea as this battery is very very dangerous also white would have these two pawns you know isolated and um, and and doubled so a really bad idea this is why we have rook e1 so um, young Krzysztof Duda anticipate that okay that's gonna be the open file now e5 so I need to control that also I'm, I'm gonna make a space for my bishop so we have knight b6 as the knight did the job already on the queen side now he's gonna be activated in the center and of course d5 looks like very very juicy square for this knight uh, we have bishop d1 as planned and now knight d5 kicking the queen and now the queen could go for example to g5 um, and stay on the king side however Duda uh, prefers to withdraw so we have queen d2 uh, and now e takes on f5 we have bishop c2 now and queen d6 bishop b2 so improving trying to you know improve the position of these bishops however it's a it's a very very slow process and vichy also you know wants to improve his position so bishop c6 and now uh, these bishops actually this move it's very very important also this bishop as well uh, because this bishop can come to c1 uh, and control for example e3 and you will see why it's so important also so this move is very important to just control e8 you will also see why it's so important so it's uh, you know pretty impressive how, how both of the players in the rapid time control anticipate the plans of the opponents we have rook e5 so now uh, white are ready to um, to double the rooks on the e file and now f4 preparing the outpost for the knight very naughty knight and very annoying outpost and um, and also the queen for example cannot reach g5 so a uh, multi-purpose move and also what black would like to do is continue the attack with the g5 g4 and then f3 and then break through to the position of the king very brave by vichy anand we have rook b to e1 so duda controls them the e file uh, and now knight e3 very annoying uh, outpost and now uh, definitely white has to do something so bishop c1 with the plan of eliminating that intruder uh, and here rook a to e8 so Vichy Anand also fights for the open e5 we have queen f2 as planned now then the knight is under attack so knight d5 now attacking c3 uh, and here we have bishop b2 defending 
uh, rook e5 now and d takes on e5. So young Krzysztof Duda got already the passed pawn and now black has to do something so queen e6. So the queen became a blocker, not the greatest blocker. However, it's not so easy actually to reach that queen. So for now it's a, it's a pretty decent position for the queen. We have bishop c1, so inviting black actually to take c3. However, is that even possible? After queen h4, white gonna have very strong attack on h7 and also um, double attack on f4. So that's not really that great. However, Vichy has different idea here. So bishop e8 first and now the idea is to exchange the light square bishops uh, and then bring the knight to very beautiful outpost on d3. So that would be the monster knight without the light square bishops. This is why Duda want to exchange the bishop for the knight. So we have bishop e4 attacking the knight, but now knight c3. Uh, and Duda said, but I'm gonna do that anyway, this way. Bishop h7 with check, king h7, and now queen c2 with the attack on the, on the king. So we have bishop g6 and now queen c3. Uh, and here is the one of the critical moments of the game because Vichy is doing really, really great. He has protected past pawn uh, and also he has a very beautiful outpost on the d3. So definitely the knight cannot uh, go there. However, he could go there with the rook. Uh, the only problem is that the rook defended f4, um, this pawn. Uh, but is it worth it? Let's see. So for example, after bishop f4, rook d3 can be very strong. Uh, and for example, the queen can also take together with the rook the, the, the pawn on a3. So for probably queen b4, but then we would have queen b6 and after king h1 this pawn can be pushed and this is very dangerous bishop c1 let's say queen f2 can come to the game uh, attacking the rook so rook g1 and then c2 rook to d1 is coming so vichy would be in excellent excellent position however uh, he didn't go with the rook to this beautiful outpost he went there with the bishop um, and it's not that great because now we have queen d4 um, and g5 so finally defending the the pawn on f4 but that's not the idea here i show you already uh, what's the vichy idea we have bishop d2 and now g4 so trying to open the position we have f takes on g4 and now f3 g takes on f3 rook takes on f3 uh, and now bishop e3 by jan krzysztof duda he has one extra pawn however after queen f7 he doesn't like you know the pressure on position on his king and do you see that already there is the checkmate in two rook f1 and checkmate in next move so this is why jan krzysztof duda play queen a7 pinning the queen and now what black should play probably exchange the queens immediately it's just you know it cannot be avoided so uh queen a7 bishop a7 and then probably rook f4 going after that pawn and also trying to go after that pawn so for example e6 just pick up the pawn king f2 rook e4 and after exchanging everything a black gonna be on time so that's gonna be probably a draw okay bishop c5 also white gonna you know uh keep the, the an eye on the on these two pawns and uh, that's gonna be a, just a draw uh, so Vichy try king g6, however, it's not that great because it's just giving the pawn for free. So we have queen a6 with check, king h7, and now queen a7 again, king g8, uh, and now queen f7, king f7. And now Vichy has one minute on the clock and Jan Krzysztof Duda only 17 seconds. However, he has the winning move in the position. Probably King G2 was winning here because now uh, the only way for the, for the rook, because the rook cannot go anywhere. All the squares actually are covered. So probably Bishop E4 is the only move. And after Rook F1, White gonna force to exchange the rooks. So, okay, Rook F1 and, and taking uh, or something like Rook F6, but it doesn't really matter because the rook is still pinned. So forcing to exchange the rooks and after rook f1, king f1, and let's say c3, uh, king e2, 
C2. Uh, yes, this pawn is very close to the promotion. However, uh, the dark square bishop is always watching C1. And now what white gonna do is, you know, push these pawns, uh, H, H pawn and G pawn. They are connected. They are past pawns. So it should be, you know, winning for white. White has two extra pawns. So uh, that probably was the best idea here. Uh, and young Krzysztof Duda could win that game. However, he played bishop C5. So he wants to cut all the counterplay uh, from Vichy first. So bring the bishop to the b4 and then uh, control c3. So both of the pawns would be stuck over there. Uh, we have king e6 uh, and now king g2. However, now it's too late because the, the rook can now move to f7. We have bishop b4 as planned and now rook c7. So the idea, of course, is to push the pawn. Uh, and now again... Uh, how to continue because Jan Krzysztof Duda still can win that uh, what he has to do is play rook e3 uh, and now c3 wouldn't be that great because you know the the bishop is under attack so rook d3 and now after let's say c2 the bishop d2 is always on time uh, so so probably that would be the end game however now white has the rook end game and three extra pawns so definitely this is also winning but we have h4 in our game what an emotions you know what an emotions h4 in the game uh, and now vichy you know can continue with his pawn so we have the race c3 h5 uh, c2 bishop d2 on the time um, and now rook d7 threatening the bishop on e4 with check and taking this bishop and of course the bishop cannot be taken uh because then we're gonna have the promotion over there so that's not even possible. This is why we have bishop c1, Anand, 50 seconds on his clock. So that means he plays on his incrementation very fast and Duda uh, still 20 seconds. So of course he doesn't have a choice. He also plays on his incrementation. Uh, and now for Vichy, how to continue? Probably rook d4 uh, was the way to go here. Uh, however, as you see, a lot of uh, inaccuracies from both sides and a lot of chances to win. For example, here, very interesting line, king f3, and now after bishop h7, uh, then g5 can be played, bishop f5, just to avoid any g6, g6 anyway, otherwise, uh, of course, bishop gonna control this square, so that's not the way we play chess, g6, bishop g4, sacrificing one of the pawns, however, that's not gonna be enough, because let's say after king f2, bishop h5, uh, g7, this is possible however rook g4 and black are under control it shouldn't be a problem to actually draw the game uh, this pawn gonna fall uh, this pawn also gonna fall so they are gonna be just exchange of course the bishop cannot uh, help to defend because we would have the promotion here so uh, that would be of, of course a disaster rook e2 and you cannot defend that pawn so probably just exchange and that would be um, the draw this time uh, but we have bishop h7 here uh, and now again how to continue as white because white still can get a very good position g5 this is what duda played very good move and now rook d1 by vichy and how to continue as white white still has a slightly better position but is it enough to win huge question now king f2 looks like uh, you know the best move in the position however um, how to win from that position bishop f5 probably is forced because of g6 so g6 and now black could stay on this diagonal so for example bishop e4 bishop cannot be taken because this bishop gonna be taken and then promotion uh, uh, so probably g7 and after bishop h7 uh, h6 this bishop gonna fall this position uh, also defend c7 and after let's say king d5 king e2 then black always has this move bishop d3 uh, and the king has to be moved now where to move the king uh, if king f2 then bishop h7 and now how you gonna progress that's the problem so um if you play of course king e2 then we're gonna have a threefold repetition so maybe bishop b2 
uh, and then king e6 uh, and after rook g1 trying to to advance the pawn uh, the problem is after let's say king f7 e6 uh, and taking the pawn it, this actually doesn't win the game yet because after bishop g8 uh, rook g8 uh, there is the move rook b1 going after the bishop and now if the bishop is moved then we're gonna have promotion so here is the problem what white would have to play is something like king e3 uh, and and that would be also a draw that would be also a draw theoretical draw so uh, probably after bishop d3 white would have to play king e3 very interesting move uh, of course bishop h7 that would be uh, that would be a draw however interesting if uh, in this position black gonna take rook e1 then king d3 actually wins the game because black cannot stop both these pawns okay uh this of course is winning for white so uh, that's probably a draw it would be very difficult with king f2 so do the risk here and he played g6 uh, and he calculate okay i'm gonna lose the rook however uh, after g takes on h7 probably i'm gonna win so rook c1 then i'm gonna have the queen but it's still not so easy because rook g1 king g1 and black also gonna have the queen and now is it the win for white with two extra pawns they are protected however where the king can escape the queen is in the corner so that that's probably a draw as well uh, there is no way actually to to bring the queen to make a shelter for the king so uh, that would be you know perpetual check and that would be also a draw so after g6 what vichy played the best move in the position bishop g6 sacrificing the bishop but of course bishop cannot be taken because now the rook is hanging so king f2 was played however it's too late bishop h5 so Jan Krzysztof Duda lost his assets two extra pawns and he lost of both of them for free king f2 bishop b2 he could play both of this move before but now it's too late he plays that but now it's too late bishop g4 we have rook g1 and now bishop f5 by uh vichy rook e1 uh, and now king d5 and here uh jan krzysztof duda doesn't have um, many chances this king just gonna advance here um, and win the game so he tried e6 but of course that is a free pawn so bishop e6 and now rook e5 so at least trying to get that pawn however now we have king d6 and if this pawn is taken then of course it's also losing rook b1 and even if white delivers the check that's not enough king c5 of course wins the game and uh, and yeah that's all this is the the promotion and that's that's winning so um we have rook e1 and now bishop c4 so this bishop gonna work as a shelter for for black for now it's a very solid bishop we have rook g1 trying to deliver a checks from the from the side but now we have king c5 rook g5 with check bishop d5 and the rook of course have to go back uh, otherwise black gonna just advance and win the bishop so we have rook g1 um, and now king c4 so slowly but surely the king gonna go to a2 a and win the game we have rook g4 another check king b3 and now rook b4 king a2 we have king e3 but after bishop b3 Jan Krzysztof Duda resigned so Vichy Anand won and, he, uh, and Jan Krzysztof Duda resigned because he cannot do anything uh black gonna take the the bishop in the next move and if the bishop is is moved then of course the promotion on c1 wins the game so this is why in this position Jan Krzysztof Duda resigned and I would like to show you the score so what just happened so first thing first both teams make a little changes but very strange because Radosław Wojtaszek who won uh, with Vidit Gujarati in the first round uh, then he was replaced by Grzegorz Gajewski and Vidit managed to win against Gajewski that's the that's the first change uh, also uh, we have uh, Michal Sarin who who won against Igor Janik in the first round uh, but of course it can be understandable that Pragananta also would like to play uh, so this is why he played on the junior board and he lost to Igor Janik this time so uh, these changes were were quite strange 
and then we have uh, Alicia Śliwicka who drawn against Vantika Gravel before in the game before Alicia actually won so that was a better change from India side and now uh, decisive games from Harika Dronavali and Hampi Koneru. They delivered the win. So we can say that actually women of India won for their representation. So beautifully two points uh, before they, they deliver only one point. Uh, so that was a draw. And on the first board, Vishi Anan won at the end against Jan Krzysztof Duda. Both of them probably didn't know that this game doesn't really matter because it was decisive before. However, that was for the press and Vichy Anand delivered the win very beautifully and then we had the Armageddon Monika Sochko again yesterday she had to play in the against Azerbaijan Armageddon and she won by the miracle two seconds to the end and then she delivered the checkmate in the position where uh, where actually player from Azerbaijan uh, had to cooperate to to actually let this this checkmate happen that was something incredible but yes that was a miracle and that happened uh, and this time again Monika Sochko played against Hampi Koneru Hampi Koneru got black so she just needed a draw and she played very very solid and she just didn't want to lose on time she played quite solid and quite fast and at the end she delivered the checkmate with two queens Monika Sochko had to actually risk and she risked too much but you know draw wasn't enough because if the draw then Hampi Koneru would win by the draw and India would advance anyway so yeah that's all for today and as always if you like this video i would like to just tell you and thank you especially if you are from india and you're watching that that my tweet got like 50 retweets for me it's a lot uh, as my channel you know it's still developing very small channel i also got 200 likes so i really appreciate that and if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more material more games press subscribe smash the bell button and drop the comment especially if you are the india congratulations to team india and see you in the next one